All right, everybody, we are going to give a shot. My very first try at Lovable. Now, Lovable has been exploding. They just raised a massive amount of money. They're extremely fast growing. And as somebody who's been teaching design and also a practitioner of design and code for like 20 freaking years, I needed to try it. And so I'm gonna give my honest feedback um, and we're going to ask it to build an actual app that I'm currently showcasing people how to build for free on this YouTube channel. It's called Side Bling. And I'm gonna, just gonna read the prompt that I'm about to give to Lovable. And right now, like I said, we're building that app in Cursor and Claude Code. We're gonna try this in Lovable to see what Lovable actually produces. So here we go. Here is the prompt, it's not too long but I wanted to give it enough information to try to knock it out. So build an AI app that allows users to enter a skill or hobby that they enjoy. And in response, the app will return a list of ways that they can monetize that skill or hobby via the open AI API. The landing page should feature a text field with a show me the money CTA button next to it centered horizontally and vertically within the viewport. The overall aesthetic should be green, white, and black. And when they click show me the money, it will connect to the open AI API and will return a list of up to 10 different ways they can monetize their hobby or skill. While it waits for a response from the API, there should be some sort of loading indicator. Now, once the response is received, it will show them a list in card format of up to 10 different ways to monetize their idea. The card should have a title and a brief description of up to two to three sentences. When there, there will also be a button in each card that says show me how. And then when somebody clicks show me how, it communicates with, with the open AI in order to generate a more comprehensive step-by-step -step approach that further elaborates on how they can tackle that specific monetization model. Um, I'm not attaching any Figma documents to this. We're gonna let it do it on its own and then see how easy it is for me as a designer to come in and also change it. So let's see what it does. All right, here we go. Open AI API key required. All right, here it goes. This is the design. We got skill money, skill money. Turn your skills into cash. Yeah, what's your skill? All right, and we'll show you exactly how to monetize it. All right, so let's give this a shot. Um, I like reading romance novels. Show me the money. Finding money making opportunities. Let's get that rid of that. All right, you can start a romance book blog, launch a romance uh, club subscription service, sell curated romance. All right, so it, it did what I asked it to. I'm not a huge fan of the design. I think it could be improved big time, but that's okay. It's, it's usable, so that's important. Start a romance book blog, show me how. Okay, so I don't think this part is functioning. Um, let's see. Oh no. So I guess it was supposed to be functioning, but now we have an error. Try to fix. All right, so let's give that a shot again. This time we'll say, I like playing metal guitar solos. Show me the money. Finding money, making opportunities. It did give us the loader icon. That's certainly cool. All right, um, offer online metal guitar lessons. That makes sense. Show me how. There should be some type of loading indicator. Perhaps I will um, reprompt this to say, get rid of all the stuff in the middle, have a loading icon while this waits for a response from OpenAI. Now, there it actually worked. There we go. So step one, define your niche, set up your teaching space. All right, so we could probably have it structure the title description approach of each one of these. Back to ideas. All right, so I'm actually pretty impressed with the functionality it was able to knock out literally within like what, two prompts? That's pretty solid. Let's see how it is in terms of iterating with these more specific requests. So the first one I'll ask it to do is the loading icon for the cards. When you click show me how, let me zoom up here. 
get rid of the button, title, and description in the cards, in the card rather, and show a show the uh, loading, no, we'll say the animated loading icon that you used after the initial prompt. Center it in the card vertically and horizontally. All right, let's see what it does. All right, let's give this another shot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I like shooting I compound bow. Show me the money. So I'm expecting this loading indicator to be showing up in the center of the card. Archery coaching, show me how. Ah, okay. So that's actually pretty solid generating guide. Yeah, I like this so far. This is a pretty good experience in terms of the functionality. So the next question I have then is, how easy is, is it for me to manipulate the design as a designer? And so I see this little edit button down here. And what this is doing is it is finding all the HTML elements in the DOM, the document object model. And then it is basically gonna allow us to kind of select that specific element and adjust the CSS settings. That's what I imagine is gonna happen. Again, in terms of design, I mean, there's so much, you know, to, 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 to be desired here, essentially. So let's go ahead, hit edit. And let's say, for instance, I want to take this div. Now, what's it going to allow me to do? I can edit the styles of the div, like border radius, background. How about I click advanced and go to code? Okay. so. Select parent, no, go to code. What does code look like? All right, so this is gonna give me direct access to the HTML and all that good stuff. I would imagine I could click on app CSS if I understand CSS and be able to adjust that as well. Okay, so let me get out of here. If I can go back home, how do I do this? Let's, I, I don't know how to get out of here. I literally don't know how to get the fuck out of here. And the fuck, how do I go back to the editor? Oh, by clicking that link up there. And that's not too obvious. Okay, so anyhow, yeah, okay, let's say for instance, we wanna change this, uh, let's focus on this, this button right here. Uh, let's click edit, input, ask for a quick change, edit styles. It seems like it only gives you just border radius. Like, it, it would, like for instance, there's a stroke on here, but it, I don't see the option to use a GUI to change the, you know, like the no-code approach um, to change like the stroke color. So that's a little strange to me because it should be pulling all of the CSS properties that are associated and explicitly defined on a specific DOM element and allowing me to change that through a, a GUI of some sort. I'm not sure why they would have that. I mean, of course I can prompt it to ask for a quick change on you know, the stroke color, for instance, but I would rather do that visually, but it's only giving me two options here, background and border radius. So that's a little strange to me. Um, like if I change the background color of this area, um, inherit. Well, I could I do this? Okay, yeah, so I could do that. That's not a big deal. I can click custom and, and adjust that. I'm going to leave it just white, but it's kind of strange. What about the H2 element? We select that. Okay. So it does have edit content, but I click on this edit styles. Okay. So we have font size, font weight, color, and text align along with advanced. Okay. If I come in here on this button, again, we have type in there for edit content, edit styles, font size, all right, so it makes sense. It does pull some of them, but I don't know why it wouldn't have the stroke, for instance, on this element, because what if I wanted to change that visually or not have to ask for a change? So that's one big kind of concern that I have up here. So I think what would be interesting at this point is to do a comparison of the, my project and my custom designed version of this project um, along with what happens after we click show me the money because we have, I have both of them 
and we'll kind of see you know what they look like compared to each other So the key takeaway here is obviously it helps to have some design skills. Uh, yeah, functionally, it's able to produce the same concept of what I'm working on here with side bling, but in terms of design, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't even match up at all. And so if you're somebody who's using these tools and you want to build out, you know, serious projects, you're going to have a hard time if you don't have any design skills. So that's one of the things I teach here at design course. Um, and we're going to be shifting to a very strong emphasis on using these AI tools, but supplementing, augmenting them, enhancing them with other skills outside of AI. I love AI, and I think we can maximize AI usage as much as possible in areas where it makes sense. Um, right here, in terms of design, it doesn't make sense. Now, I didn't attach a Figma design to this, but you would still need to have the Figma design in the first place. If you rely on these tools just to generate a UI for you and then you start trying to make edits and adjustments to that UI without understanding what fundamentals of UI are, it's you're gonna kill the project. And if you try to get traffic to it and you try to make it successful, you're gonna have a really freaking hard time. So make sure to subscribe up on this channel. These are things that I'm gonna need to really be diving into big time going forward. I think tools like Lovable and Bolt, they're great as an entryway to getting into development, um, but you do need to develop these secondary skills um, like understanding UI, UX, and even understanding front-end development as well. So make sure to sub up, and I will see you all very soon.